So welcome everybody. Uh, this week I would like to do a few things, but one of the primary uh, things I'd like to focus on this week is the QA, something that um, been popping up a lot lately. Stan and I were working on that uh, uh, a couple of days ago, or I guess it was yes, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. So we uh, yes. working on that, and I'm realizing that it's one of those things that you get on a number of different levels, and um, it's so crucial to uh, anything we're doing in the internal arts, be it Taiji or Qigong or Bagua or Xingyi or whatever, being able to get a familiarity with that. And it's also something that's really not well understood. I, I know I've talked to a number of Chinese martial artists and uh, they've never heard of it. So it's something that is, you know, and most of you have, uh, are, are familiar with, with, uh, with it, you know, either through my work or others. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a concept that is, that is there, but um, it is one that has so many layers that it, it, it requires a certain amount of focus and, uh, and investigation to actually take it further. And something that I've, uh, I included in my three pillars, that in central equilibrium and energetic coherence as like the foundation points of, of everything that I'm doing. So the, uh, the essence of the qua is the, the idea you want to have a sung qua. And then sung means to release down into the instrin intrinsic structure. And in this case, it's releasing into the support of your connective tissue. Into, um, and when you do that, you are no longer pushing away from the earth. And this is something that's happening at a pre-conscious level. It's been something so deeply programmed into your body mind. that something you've been doing, you know, that pushing away has been something you've been doing since you were a toddler. It's, it's how we learn how to walk. And it's never really challenged. And so we think in terms of, say, balance, uh, whatever we're trying to, oh, if, we, if I get my, my meat aligned just in the right way, then I am able to hold my center and, and not fall over. And this is something that we do right, you know, from the, from the first time we, we stood up and, and tried to walk across the room till much later in life until you actually consciously do something different. And that is to let go of this resistance to the pull of gravity and to release it down into the supporting structure. And it's a whole different set of support. It's like, you know, I speak of it as, as a speaking, releasing into the connective tissue, the tendons and ligaments and fascia and cartilage and, and, and that sort of thing. But it's, um, there is a, a set of yin muscles that you can call them. That is, if I, if I were to do, like say, let's say if I, if I do a, if I do a squat, you know, I go down, I push and I'm pushing up to, uh, to push away from the earth, then I am, I'm pushing against that. I'm, I'm breaking with, gravity here, I'm, I'm saying, okay, I'm pushing away from the earth. And I'm using what I consider to be the yang muscles, the extending outward muscles. Whenever I ah, release down and just relax down into my, my qua, my hip joint, you know, I release and I, then I'm using an entirely different set of tissues in my legs to support me. And these are, it's more of a passive kind of kind of muscular uh, activity than with the with the, the pushing away the, the, the squat. So uh, the qua is the hip joint, basically, but it's also all the things around the hip joint. It's all the things that connect the all the things that connect the, the legs to the torso. Uh, 
for most of us, it's frozen. And part of the reason why I think that, that a lot of the Chinese people that I spoke to, the Chinese martial artists who I spoke to about this, don't even think about it is because it was never an issue. It's something that, you know, it's just part of what they do. But for a lot of us, most of us, it is an issue. It's something that is, is completely off the radar. We don't even think about, about actually doing that. And I'm speaking generally. Uh, I know a lot of you have done a lot of work on, on this. So, I'm, so uh, there's, I'm not tarring everyone with the same brush here, but I want to, to speak to what we have come from rather than you know, where we are now. So the uh, idea of this is to be able to release that hip joint so that that chronic tension that holding tight is let go so that we can then have a lot of fluidity in the uh, in the pelvic area and this has a host of benefits you know it, it's really beneficial for the urogenital system but also it takes the strain off the of knees and back and uh, as well as the hip joint itself so it but probably primarily from our perspective, it's it whenever you are sunhua, it allows for the a flow of chi to the yin chi of the earth to rise up into the body and out through the top. The yang chi of the heavens that come in and then go out through your feet. So then you have this two-way traffic of chi in your body. You're, opening up to the big chi and it's not getting stuck there at, at, the, uh, at the pelvic area. And whenever it is stuck in there, then we kind of get stuck in our head and we get the, the thoughts patterns tend to get a little hot and uh, the yang chi gets stuck in your head and, and it has a myriad of problems with that. So whenever you get the sung kwa, you have, when your kwa is sung, you have unkinked the hose and allows for much more free flow there. So I want to uh, investigate this a little bit. And I'd, I'd like you to kind of bring a, a beginner's mind to this because again, a lot of you have done a lot of work with this and uh, consequently there's, uh, you, you, you know it pretty well, but if maybe uh, you, you look at it, what, what I'm talking about, there may be some points here which take it to an deep, even deeper level. So um, um, let me do this. So one of the things I notice when people are, uh, are doing, uh, say, a qua exercise, is I'll do it uh, turning sideways here. Is the uh, is, say if my right foot is forward and I turn, you'll you'll notice that the butt will go back as they turn. Okay, like that. So that that indicates what's happening there is the leg is pulling with the body. So the whole body is turning. So th that's one issue is. Is the whole body turns and and the leg goes back with the turn. The other thing is there's a turn, but it's a turn from the shoulders. So the, the quad doesn't go anywhere, you just get this twist happening in the body. So what I'm trying to do is this, and uh, it's helpful to have a, a prop, say like a chair or something like this. I use this device here. And I bring my knee against that. So I know that this is not going to move. If I feel the ball of my foot and I set my knee. And then as I release the quad, it's like I'm almost kind of sitting down. My butt's not going anywhere. My leg's not going anywhere. You can see that what's happening is my torso is, is is turning, but the leg stays the same. The leg stays in the same position. So I'm releasing down and turning out to the, to the side, but 
the leg stays. So what happens is I have to release here at the quad. Can you I do show that. that from the side? I can do that from the side, sure. So from the side, like this. So the knee is set. I turn. Notice that my butt doesn't go. What I'm not doing is this, right? I'm not doing that. I'm not turning and pulling away. I'm the leg stays here, the knee stays there, and as I turn, I'm keeping my weight of, over the ball of the right foot as I'm doing this, because I'm, I'm releasing down in, and I'm giving a bigger turn than most of you're going to get because I've been doing this for decades, so it's it's pretty softened up here. But even if you're only turning like this far, that's as far as you go because. The quad is also highly sensitive to stress and any kind of any kind of uncertainty, any kind of you know uh, fear or whatever, we clench, we get tight assed, we we hold the hold of the pelvic area. So you uh, if you're not at all confident about this, you're gonna hold on to some tension in your other hip. So you have to really so it helps to pick up the heel of your back foot, right? And so you're really, really entirely focused on this front leg. So the turn comes with a spiraling down into the, into the earth, you're like this as you're going down, you're spiraling that. But notice that my head is not bobbing up and down, even though I'm, Spiraling down, I'm not doing this, right? I'm not going down like that and up again. I am just, boom. The head stays relatively even, even though I am spiraling down. With the, uh, do it on the other side, you can see, boom. I do that, boom, spiral down like this. So the, well, I, the, the, the leg stays set and the claw releases. Okay, any questions on this so far? Okay. Everybody, we're all good? Okay, so the, uh, um, I'd like to do the, uh, the claw exercise that I do in the, in the uh, in the warm up set with specific attention to this. And I guess I should make a mention of turning the other way, the, so the inside turn, because that also is a, uh, it's a thing, right? So if I'm like this, and so we, we, I showed you this one, but it also goes the other way. I feel the ball set the knee and I spiral down this way. The, knee, the, the leg stays straight and I'm releasing down, turning, to my left here, even though uh, because I'm in the right foot, and the leg doesn't move. Any time you spend on this is valuable time. It takes a lot of uh, a lot of repetition, a lot of practice, a lot of kung fu in order to be able to to really get it so that it is, you know, it becomes part of who you are. But any time spent is really um, compensated very well. And everything you're doing. So let's uh, uh, stand up and, uh, except for you, Linda. Uh, <laughs> so stand up and just bring your right foot forward and set your knee. You can use the you can use a, the prop if you like. Use a chair or something like that to help you get that. Pick up the heel of your back foot, right? And it helps to to, to avoid the the twisting of the shoulders. Bring your arm, your hands on your hips. So you're feeling the ball of the right foot. You're setting the knee over the ball of the foot. And then we're just gonna turn, spiral down to the outside right now. Just spiral down and then back. And just really do it nice and slow. And it's a letting go. It's not, you're not forcing anything. It's a letting go. You're ah, just kind of releasing into that support. And you may notice that as you do that, you use an entirely different set of muscles to make this happen. It's not that we're not using the muscles at all, 
It's just that we are uh, we're using a different set of muscles, those yin support muscles, to make that happen. We're not going to have you're not going to be able to stand up very long if you don't use any muscles at all. So, but you'll feel that as you do this, you may feel even a little bit of fatigue from that because it's uh, they're not the usual muscles that we use. Okay, you get that. So now we're going to go the other way. We're going to turn to the left, feel the feel the ball set the knee, and then spiral down to the left and back. So again, your your leg is going nowhere, your knee is going nowhere, and you're just releasing down into the claw. Notice you're also not going into your back foot at all. Everything is on that front foot, over the ball of the foot. Feel the ball of the foot. Feel the pressure of your body tamping down on that. Because what you're generating here is a tremendous amount of root just by doing this. Do you feel the energy in the inside of your leg more than the outside? Uh, yes. Good, good call. Not just the energy, but you also feel the support coming. You're going to get the yin, both the yin channels on the inside of the leg and the uh, yin uh, muscles are going to let you know that, that they're there. And they're not so sure about this whole exercise you're doing. But good. Now we'll go to the back foot and pick up your front heel. So I'm going to do it in a turn sideways so you can see that. All right, so, so we're going to turn to the outside right now. So we spiral down to the left. So you're still keeping the weight over the ball of the foot. What I'm not doing is this. We're not, I'm not sliding back like that, right? So I'm not pushing my butt back at all. I'm rotating the whole torso around the central pillar, around the axis. Down, down, down. You're just kind of letting everything go. The image for Sung is, uh, in the Enneagram, is like a, a pine tree. The branches of a pine tree, how they kind of find their, their place, right? They, they release, you know, and if you get a Christmas tree, you know, everything's up here like this, and then you, you bring it home and you let it set out, and it's like, kind of the branches come down, but they don't go all the way down. They, they go down to where, where they're supposed to be, where they're, just, they're, they're built for. Good. Now go the other way. Turn, turn to, the, uh, to the right. You feel the ball set the knee, and you spiral down to the right. You're still all the way to still in your left leg as you do this. You're pivoting around that central pillar. You're rotating, but you're also screwing down into the, into the earth as you do this. And practicing this uh, allows you to develop those yin muscles, allows you to, to develop confidence in the support of the connective tissue as you do that. Also, you're learning to move the whole structure as a unit. You're not twisting like that, right? You're, you're moving the whole unit together, which then is going to give you a lot of structural integrity in your posture. Okay, so now bring your left foot forward. Pick up your right heel, feel the ball of your left foot, set the left knee. So you're feeling the weight on the inside of the foot. You pick up the heel, the right heel, so that you, you're having that same full focus on that on the, on the left leg now. And spiral down to the left and come back to center. Slow it way down and just feel into that.
And this is something that you want to do in every, at, at, at the very least, in every move of the type you form, in every piece of every move, in every Qigong posture, because this is the way you unkink the hose so that you can allow that energy to flow freely. You also get to learn to like Sung, but only if you practice it. You learn to like just, oh, releasing down, releasing all that tension. Because then whatever you do, when you release all that muscular tension, things work better. Good, so now we're gonna turn to the left. Feel the ball of the left foot again. Set the left knee and barrel down to the right. Good. Now go to your right foot, pick up your left heel. So you're very fully into that right leg. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. You reach with your knee one, reach with your central, with your, uh, the crown of your head. Tuck in your chin, spiral down to the right. Come back. And there are lots of ways to do this exercise that get more complicated, but we don't want to do those right now. We want to really just focus on the next level of sung, the next level of letting go and trusting the connective tissue system, trusting the structure of your body. Feeling the tensegrity of the whole system. Go ahead and go the other way. Feel the ball, set the knee, and spiral down to the left. Good. And uh, cool. So they just go back to center and just kind of go to a neutral state and just allow yourself to release down and get sung in a uh, in a Wu Ji stance. Just allow your arms to to hang and. Uh, the elbows out slightly to the side. Um, lately, I've been talking a lot about elbow chin and uh, and the last few uh, episodes and my blogs. And uh, someone pointed out a, uh, a Jonathan pointed out the uh, something that uh, where we really see this is in the Superman posture, right? If you, if you reach out with your elbows and in that posture you can feel it changes your energy to be in that posture. You have your elbows out like that and there's a stability and a, uh, a vitality that comes from that posture. So now just take that, that same thing, you're, without the hands on the hips, just bring it down here, and bring your elbows out slightly and feel that. Camera went off. No, didn't. Okay. So just feel that. So you're releasing down into the quad. It's back. Yeah. Releasing down into the quad as you do that. And just feel the chi that gets produced whenever you unkink the hose. Feel into your hands and just notice the vitality, the, uh, the, the flow that is occurring throughout your body as you get soon. 
So, and just now just push away from the earth and just try to push up and touch your head against the ceiling and just feel what that feels like to, to push away, to, uh, to resist gravity. And then go the other way and just ah, settle down into it. And just feel the difference between those two and push away and ah, release down. So it gives you a taste for what Sung Kwa feels like and the potential for vibrant energy that, that gets produced just by that, that simple act of uh, letting go of muscular tension in your hips. And, you know, that standing in that posture, you know, just feel what that feels like, feel the Oh, da, da, da. here I come to save the day. And ah, oh, boom. Nice and relaxed, very soon. You may feel the tingling over, over your whole body as you do that, as a chi just starts um, just circulating you'll feel like that electricity throughout the whole system. At the very least, you're gonna feel a lot, of, a lot of tingling, pulsing sensation in your hands, a sense of fullness. Yeah. Okay, so grab a seat. Let's see if we have any questions on that. The thing keeps, camera keeps going off. No, it's on. Okay. It's your monitor. Oh, okay. Not the camera. Okay. Monitor goes up. Good. Something's funky there. Well, just... is, it, is it the connection? There you go. Good. We're back. Good. Valerie. Okay, I'll go for that. Um, okay, definitely really can feel the like when we're standing in Wu Chi and you know being Sun Kwa um, that and then opposing going pushing up when I release that and go back into Sun Kwa the, it's like everything goes it just expands it's that's just such a great feeling um, I love it I love it I love it the other thing that I've been playing with a little bit on uh, playing with the qua is rather than keeping my hands on my hips, this works for me in case I, it's like instead of letting myself get sloppy, which happened, um, if I put my hand on the front of my thigh, you know, kind of the top of my thigh, and as I turn, I can feel how my ball of my foot is set, my knee is set, and then I can, you know, move from not that I, I, I do, I move from the qua and I can feel it going either way in or out that, oh yeah, that leg is not. Moving. That's a great suggestion. Let me, let me see if I get what you're talking about there. So you're standing like this, you're, you're, put your hand here, is that what you're talking about? Yep, yep. So that you can feel the, feel the qua moving, the torso moving away from the supporting leg, right? Yes. That we're talking about? That's, yep. that's a great idea, Valerie. Thank you. That's a really good, that's a good, uh, a good, a helpful tip. Yay. <laughs> Scott. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for answering the question. I forgot that I had to ask because um, this was a thing I've been having trouble with. Okay, uh, good. Second, one thing that I have a problem with is doing that. By the time I'm done, I must be dropping down a little bit every time I do it because I eventually I have to like straighten back up because I keep sinking down a little bit each time. Any suggestions or just uh, sure? More? Do the thing with the uh, uh, setting your knee using a, a chair or something to okay. to work with it because what's, if you're really dropping down that much, chances are your knee is getting pushed forward as you do it as you as you're going along here. So if you start off like like this, right, 
you know, and as you as you do it, you keep the knee keeps going out a little farther, a little farther, a little farther, and then you're dropping down because that's really the only way you're going to be dropping down. Because if that that knee is set, it's kind of a governor on on how far down you can go, right? So with the only way you can only way you could actually go down any deeper and still have that set is by actually dropping your butt down. And then, you know, that's, that's its own thing there. Okay, so uh, I think, uh, so use that, use that uh, a, a tool there, put a chair there, or whatever, to, uh, as a, uh, as a guide until, until your body gets the, gets the message and says, oh, this is what I'm doing. But it could also be slumping in the torso, so if you can remember to lift this knee one. Okay. Maria says it could also be slumping in the torso, so that's a, that's another thing. So you want to make sure that your your spine is 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 vertical, and you're reaching with your your knee one as you do that. And yeah. just probably very obvious, but um, I mean, if we're using muscles we haven't used before, we probably need to take it a little bit slow, right? And uh, I, 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 I would I would concur. Yes. Slow tomorrow. <laughs> So uh, yeah, you do uh, a little bit each day, you know, and then gradually build up to it. Like I say, I've been doing it for decades, so it's you know I'm not, you know, I don't even think about these things sometimes. But I I, I realize that whenever I try to uh, to uh, to show it to somebody, it uh, sometimes these things come up. So who else came on there? Oh, nobody. Nobody. Okay, good. Okay. So it's, yes, Richard. Um. A couple, a couple of things occur to me, um, and I, I think, uh, tell me what you think. I think of opening and closing my qua as well as relaxing into my qua. And before I became sensitive to that, turning torques your knee if you're not opening and closing your qua to rotate your torso. So uh, I, I've, I've heard the term many times and always uh, been a little bit confused by the people who use the term opening and closing the quad, something that, that uh, so how do you, what do you mean by that? Can you demonstrate? Yes, I think. Um, I'll keep my pants on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, the, pe the people thank you. <laughs> if, I, if you put the edge of your hand in your inguinal crease here, right, then you know that if you're turning to the right, that requires your hand to be uh, less caught. So this is opening the qua. And if you turn back to the left, you should be able to almost trap your hand in this crease. Okay, and that'd be closing. And that would be closing. Good, and that, that's course, my understanding too. Of course. So what what do you do with that? And when you close this side, you have to open the other side. Right. Uh, but that that's not ter that's not. Wait, totally. wait, 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 you, what's that now? If I turn to the left, I'm closing my qua. Right. Here. That I'm also opening the qua on the other side. Why is that? Um, it's just a mechanical thing, I think. Um, only, only if your, only if your leg is is is, uh, is stuck there. If I don't open the qua on this side, then my leg will come with me. Right. So Which, I have to close, depending close. depending on, on how you uh, how you do your 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 form, you know, yeah. whether that is something that is uh, desirable or not. I know in in Master Chen's form that. That's not a uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. He's he's more into the whole body. You know, the 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 yin leg will follow. The insubstantial leg will follow. Okay. So, so but uh, okay. Yeah. That's, the, that, that's a secondary point. So how would you use opening and closing your qua in describing uh, in the uh, in the move? Uh, the what it is for me is a way to be mindful that flexibility in the qua area keeps me from torquing my knee when I turn left and right. Good. Uh, so instead of my knee being fixed and having to rotate, it's free to, it's free to be 
my gua is free to open as I turn. But the knee is not fixed. The, 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 the knee, the knee doesn't have to fop, doesn't the knee doesn't have to be torqued if it stays fixed if you're opening and closing your quad. So uh, yes, so that that is happening. Yes, right. So, um, and that I, and I, I I I'm only sensitive to that because before I started paying attention to this, and before I developed some flexibility in the opening and closing of my quad, I was always torquing my knee as I was turning left and right. Okay. So you get to where you can open, if you open both at the same time, you get to where you can have a great deal of flexibility without any, without any torque in your knee at all. Good, so uh, yes, okay. So we're talking about nomenclature here. So I'm just, I'm sure. just uh, wondering how- uh, Well, yeah, that's why, I, that's why I brought it up because I'm, I'm concerned that opening and closing is not the right image. Uh, I haven't found it useful yet, but uh, you know, your, your explanation shows me that it it can be useful. So, uh, so uh, sure, I I it, I haven't found it necessary to use that the, that terminology because I I found that people get very confused by it in the past. Right. But so I uh, just kind of steer away from that and have my own my own way of describing it, which gets I feel gets right to the point of the matter. Okay, that, uh, so I was hesitant to bring it up because I didn't want to add any confusion. It works. I it works. No, I think it's important you did bring it up because it is it is a term terminology that does come up a lot, and uh, I think it's worth worth discussing here. And uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it if if you understand it as you do, you know. So I think it, it, it's certainly helpful. I, I just haven't found it necessary in in describing the. Uh, uh, the exercise uh, to other people. But thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. You bet. Anybody else? Okay. Rip. Yes. Yeah, I was feeling it in my calf muscles. Is there any adjustment I can do for that? Uh, yeah, do it some more. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it, uh, the, the problem with the, with the calf muscles is that, that they have gotten shortened over time. Particularly okay. if you're if you are your weight is in your heel as opposed to the ball of your foot. Oh, okay. So it so they'll get shorter and then your Achilles will get shorter and that's going to yank on your plantar fascia as well. And so the, everything is going to get a little tighter and a little shorter, particularly as as those of us who are over twenty five here. And uh, we uh, so by doing it. You know the way I'm talking about. It, you're going to gradually lengthen those those so uh, work. gastrocnemius muscles, and you're going to create more space there in your calf, which means it will be less stress on that. Okay. Uh, also, make sure that the knee's not too far forward over the toes, because that'll yeah, it'll kill you. Okay. Okay. Rich says, make sure your knee is not too far forward over the toes. So it's not oh. going past the toes. Right. Right. And that if you are really monitoring. The knee over set over the ball of the foot, and don't yeah. let that creep out as you're out. You know, too far. Hyper, you know, push that knee too far forward. Then, then uh, you won't uh, uh, you won't overdo it there. Okay. Thank you. Great. Good. Anybody else? Um, yes. You wanted to talk about waiting for feedback. Yes. Okay. Good. So. Um, it's one of those subtle internal things that uh, is requires a lot of different kinds of languaging in order to get it get it through because we're we're talking about something at the pre-conscious level, bringing that pre-conscious up to consciousness. And so, what I've been the language I've been using for a few years now has been the idea of feeling. So you actually want to feel these things. And by that, I mean not have an emotional response to it, but to actually have a, an actual sen sensation that corresponds to what it is you're, you're bringing your attention to. So whenever I say feel the ball of your foot, that means to actually get the tactile sensation, both external and internal. So it wouldn't be tactile if it's internal, but
but you're going to get the actual sensation, both external and internal, to allow that 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 information to come up via the afferent neural network or the sensory neural network, and which is ordinarily happening at a pre-conscious level. You're getting bombarded every second with millions of bits of information coming that way. This way, bringing your attention to it and say, oh no, we're gonna focus on this particular part here. And then that, that awakens parts of your brain that are ordinarily asleep. So, but, uh, so uh, that's a long preamble to say that, that Jonathan Bricklin was uh, uh, offered something recently that, uh, that I found to be very helpful for people. And uh, uh, it was something that I had included in the explanation of feel, and many of you do already. But the, uh, the idea here is, say I'm, uh, I'm going to do a bow stance, and I, you know, I feel the ball of my right foot. What he said, and I think is, is a really helpful thing is, wait for the feedback that is you feel it but you know i think in the past i've said no really feel it uh, but in this case here you're, you're waiting for the feedback that is you're bringing your awareness to the ball of your foot and instead of just plowing forward you wait for you wait a beat and actually feel that feedback comes up to your conscious mind says, oh yeah, follow my foot, I got that now. You're, ah, oh, there, you know, you, then the same thing with the qua, you say, oh, sun qua, boom. Wait for the feedback and say, yes, I, 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 I feel that. I feel the sun qua, it's not just, oh yeah, I'm sun qua now. No, you're not, you're, ah, uh, oh, oh, okay, there, now I am. So what we're doing is we're moving the process of awareness out of the cognitive part of the brain and we're accessing other parts of the brain that are more into the uh, process of interpreting information from the the sensory neural network and uh, so it's and when we do that something really cool happens is you awaken this super conscious state. You bring about this whole brain integration that it brings you into a different state of awareness, a real sense of presence and connection. And, and you move outside of the thinky thinky part of your brain and you are just in now. And we have a number of other ways that we, we've been doing it over the years to do that. But so if you just stand up and just you you uh, go into a, a bow stand, put your right foot forward and feel the ball of your foot and then wait for the feedback and then say, okay, now I'm gonna release. And then I'm gonna turn back, but I'm waiting for the feedback to come from the foot again to come back and oh, feel the foot. Yeah, wait for the feedback and release. And then come back again, right? The same thing works with any other part of your body. If you're, re you're reaching with your elbows, say, okay, I can just reach with my elbows and nothing's happening. Or I can feel my elbows and wait for the feedback. What happens when you wait for that feedback? It's like, Ding. Something, you know, there, there's a wake up call that occurs whenever you do that. You go into a, like a ward off posture, you set the elbow, you reach with the, with the forearm, you feel that. But it's not just, oh, okay, I got that. No, wait for the feedback. Oh yeah, yeah, there, oh, there it is. You're, you're alerting parts of your brain which are ordinarily 
kind of happening at this unconscious level or pre-conscious level, and you say, oh yeah, this, there, there's something going on here. And that's where, that's where the juice gets made in, in, in Tai Chi. So you're up. Oh. So if you just go, go into, a, into a standing posture, feel both balls of the feet now. You feel the knees. Wait for the feedback. Set your elbows. Wait for the feedback. Bring your wrists up. Reach with the elbows. Wait for the feedback. Feel the wrists. Wait for the feedback. Reach with your the crown. Reach with your knee one. Wait for the feedback. Because there is a slight delay. And it, 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 every time you do this, what we're trying to do is shorten the delay so that it's, it's a really just a, a mere fraction of a second. But that takes new wiring. That takes changing your changing the wiring of your nervous system to have so much um, the, having the appropriate circuitry to allow you to make this recognition instantaneous. So you're, you're, you're changing your body mind by doing this. So the, uh, you know, the old adage is, if uh, the neurons that fire together, wire together. And so we, we do this so that we have these patterns that are, that are so familiar that the nervous system says, oh yeah, we don't have to create new neurons now. We don't have to create new neural connections. We got them already set up over here. We'll just use these, these, these bypasses that we just go right, right to, the, uh, to the place we want to go. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time you you go there. Questions, thoughts? Rick. You're on mute. You're still on mute. You're still on mute. There we go. I got it. Start over again. Okay, I did. Um, I'm not just getting mental feedback. I'm getting physical feedback. I'm yes. getting, I'm getting uh, electricity. I'm getting yes. chills. So yes. that's that's good. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about yeah. And this is where we get into the really good stuff. This is where we take in, we're taking it into the uh, into the next level of well, um, of of kung fu. The moment so we the moment we get the you're you're able. Whenever you can easily access these these energies, you know, by establishing a body mind integration that enables this to happen very quickly, then cool stuff happens. But also, I want to ask you: I get so filled up so fast that, and so I, I seem to remember from previous uh, lessons, you say, "Bear with it, don't." Because I, I feel the urge to, you know, get rid of some of it. But you say, let it practice filling up more and more, right? Yes. Okay, so awesome. Every, every time you do that, you get a little bigger. So the, the impulse is yang expansion, and then there's a yin contraction. But it's always two steps forward, one step back. Okay. So as we reestablish our homeostasis to include the new energy and information, we create a bigger framework in which to to do it so then your your space gets bigger you have more presence more you know a, a more of a commanding presence as you do that yes and also whenever i go back to a pose that we've done in the past it's more powerful Beautiful. the connection is quicker and 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 bigger right good oh, I'm getting that's, that's what we're looking for so all this stuff is just you know ideas principles that can be plugged into anything, and it, not just Taiji, but but anything. You know, we uh, once we, 
we, we, we slow it down to the, the beauty of, of say Taiji Tran is that we get to slow everything way down. We're allowed to, we, we insist on slowing everything way down so that we can examine this stuff and really take apart the toaster and, and say how this thing worked together, you know? And so that when we put it back together, we can then say, oh, I can take this and put it in that thing. But uh, until you get that, that confidence that comes from, you know, playing your piano scales very, very slowly, <laughs> and, you know, then you're not gonna be able to play very, very fast. Cool, anybody else? Linda. So I, I, I watched a video from last week, even though I couldn't attend and did what I could do sitting down. When I, when I suddenly do this thing where you're talking about feeling, which I had not really quite heard of in this way, it feels very connected to what you were describing about being, because yeah. as, soon as, as soon as I did that, and with the elbow in particular, it felt like I wasn't just thinking the word elbow, but that I became, the elbow became like the center and my whole body sort of bloomed out into one sensory thing, if that makes any sense. That, that uh, yes, exactly. So that is, uh, that, is uh, that sense of, of being, that sense of presence, you know, is a, uh, a natural byproduct of this, this, body, mind, spirit integration that we're talking about. Whenever you get into that super conscious state, you access this body, mind, spirit integration. And it's like, you know, things are happening multidimensionally at that point. That's what wholeness feels like. That is what wholeness feels like, yes. So then you're, it's a multidimensional experience at that point and you're able to gather information that you would not have access to whenever you're using the the symbolic representational mind. And just one more thing I wanted to add is when you say it's, it's, not, it's not just Tai Chi, or I like to say everything is Tai Chi. So it also is exactly the way I write, which I hadn't connected before exactly either, is when I sit down to write, I don't sit and think, oh, I'm going to write this story about this or this poem about this. I sit down and kind of just go into this state of just whateverness of everythingness of not thinking anything and then what comes will be the poem or the story and it's almost like i'm listening which is how i've described it as i'm i'm hearing it and then i'm writing it it's not deciding right. to do it and, and cutting it out of a piece of paper right and whenever whenever we're doing that we are accessing a whole brain coherence left brain right brain synchronization so that the silent part of the brain, the, the uh, right side of the brain, the, the nonverbal part, but thinks in terms of patterns and thinks in terms of you know, ideas, stuff like that, it's able to communicate to the talky part, but you as a writer, you know, you need that part too. So then uh, you the, put the, the two together and it seems like, oh, these ideas are coming from, from somewhere else, but no, no, they're coming from me. But they're, you know, the, that, that part of me that is able to, what a handsome looking dog there. Um, the, uh, <laughs> you know, the, it's all part, of, all part of the process too. It's just we're able to access these parts of our, our, our body mind that are largely unconscious most of the time. Scott had something he wanted Scott. to Yeah, I actually had more of a comment, but yeah, I, um, I keep saying I got to write these things, stuff that comes up when I'm doing my practice questions to do, and I never do it. And you just, that was you another, because I've been having trouble with the elbows. And so I not, you know, sometimes, you know, in some situations that I didn't really feel like the elbows were working. So thank you for answering another one of my unasked questions. Oh, great. <laughs> That's, two tonight. That's two tonight, you're two for two. <laughs> Valerie. Interesting, um, and I, I'm uh, chalking it a lot <clears throat> up to the fact that we were working with the qua so much. When you know, I was uh, feeling my my pointer. I'm always feeling the pointer, and then feeling the elbow. And I actually had a conversation going on with my pancreas 
and you know waiting for the feedback the feedback was i realized that my tailbone dropped a little bit each time or you know just micro but there was an adjustment there and my quad released you know it became more open and i think it's because i was more receptive to feeling that with the work that we did tonight um and i i that felt that was just well, that was really really great it was really great because that that um that connection and i could get more specific on where that expansion and that rush of energy you know seemed to be really emanating because it was so connected to there it was good it was yay <laughs> great thank you for that that's wonderful good anybody else okay let's uh, wrap it up okay let's wrap it up it's time so great thank you all for uh, joining in on this thank you all for your wonderful questions and uh, comments and uh uh let's do this again let's do it next week okay thank you. Yes. All right. we'll be here okay. thank you all bye-bye very good thanks thank you bye all <laughs> thanks <laughs>